Okay, continuing with the assembly of the uh, intern ultra. Uh, right now, I'm going to go over the uh, fat motor drive. The reason for the fat motor drive is that uh, the typical intern is, is able to uh, change from direct drive, which is just a, a pulley on the motor and a pulley on the, on the main spindle, to a back gear drive, which has a counter shaft and a, an additional uh, three times reduction. Uh, that requires just a belt move on the on the um, on the intern, but uh, these this right here is what I call fat motor. And fat motors, this right here is a Mitsubishi. It's 4.7 horsepower roughly, uh, but they don't have a lot of RPM. So uh, the intern wants to have a fast motor. So the only way around that really is to have a, a really big pulley, larger pulley on the motor. And this, in this case, this is a hub, and the pulley is removable. So here's a removable pulley that goes on here. It's a little dirty from banging around the shop, but this will go on there and bolt on and with three bolts. This hub stays on all the time, and uh, this is the uh, reduction pulley right here. That stays on all the time. These are for the wide belts, 30 millimeter belts. So you can see that's a pretty rugged, pretty rugged belt goes in there. Uh, so that works fine, but the problem is when you when you put a bigger pulley on on the motor for the direct drive, now the two pulleys are the, the lengths of them are so different that you can't use the same belt. So now you have to do a belt change in order to go from direct drive to uh, back here. So the problem with that is it's a little bit inconvenient for a normal uh, machine with the back of the machine is open and you can get to the belt. It becomes a real headache when you have a machine that has an automatic chuck. This automatic chuck has a, a, a big actuator sitting on the back of the, of the uh, spindle. So and it's got hydraulic lines attached to it and so forth. So uh, the only way to change the belt is to take off the hydraulic actuator. So uh, for all intents and purposes, it's just not doable. So we needed some way to uh, have a fat motor drive uh, that has a, a very high speed direct drive and still has the back gear and does not need to have the belt changed. But uh, as I said earlier, the, the belt lengths are so different uh, that it's not possible to use the same belt unless uh, we have some kind of a take up for the extra slack that's in the belt in the back gear mode. Uh, the back gear is where the problem is. Uh, the, the direct drive has the big, big pulley so it requires a longer belt to reach around the pulleys. So uh, this is the back here uh, motor plate. This actually, this whole thing design uh, was actually done after I started the production run, the first production run of the interns. So uh, this didn't make it onto most of the machines, but uh, this is the motor plate. It's made to be uh, universal, which means that all the cuts and everything are on both sides. So this can go on one side of the machine or the other side of the machine. Uh, but the reason, the, that doesn't mean that you mount the motor on the back of the machine. I just had a question recently about why can't you mount the motor on the back of the machine where it's out of the way and it's, the cabling is better and so forth else. The reason you can't put the motor on the back of the, of the fourth axis is because it'll crash into the mill column. So the motor always has to be on the front of the machine to avoid the mill column. But if you mount the, if you mount the intern on the other end of the table, uh, now you have to have be able to reverse the motor mount in order to have the motor on, again on the front of the machine. So this is ambidextrous in a manner of speaking. So in order to adjust the belt, this the way this goes is, is it's like so. So in order to, and then up here goes the counter shaft. The counter shaft is um, the part that, 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 that just the double reduction. So. In order to, uh, this is, this is a, this, I'm going to go over this in some detail. This is uh, the new counter shaft uh, support. And uh, this is a, a ground steel pin. And the bearings actually run right on that pin. I moved the original, um, originally I had the two pulleys were mounted hard onto a shaft. And the shaft was in a housing that rotated on bearings. Uh, and and that, that caused a little bit of problems. One for one, you had to take the, you had to take the thing apart in order to get it off of here. And I really wanted to have a, one a sub assembly that could be mounted from one side, or completely assembled and then put in from the other side and not have to, not have to be taken apart in order to remove it. So this solves that problem. In order to, uh, let me just put a bolt in this thing. Uh, 
The slots in here are to adjust the belt that runs from here up to the counter shaft. And then I have these little um, uh, drop-in nuts that, that you can, don't have to be fooling with them. You can just tighten it from the back side and they slip up and down in this little trough. So I'm just putting this on here so that the motor doesn't keep, the plate doesn't keep falling off on us. So that goes like this. Now, the reason that this, this pin has a kind of an unusual look, looks like a complicated mount. The purpose of that is uh, when you, the belts need to be tracked so, somewhere. You, need, you want some kind of facility. You don't need, but you want some kind of facility to track the belts, which means if the belt is just really hard over to one side, you want to track it a little bit so that it eases up on that, running it against that flange. Uh, flat timing belts like this, uh, if you run them one direction, they'll creep to one side, and if you run them the other direction, they'll creep to the other side. So you're, you're never going to have a, a timing belt run right in the middle. That's why they have flanges on them. But if you have it adjusted so that in one direction it creeps to one side, and in the other direction it creeps to the opposite side, that's the track. That's as, as good as you're going to get. So what this does is this has a the ball and socket arrangement. So as this goes up in here, uh, you can, it, it, uh, it stands off a little bit off of that plate. You'll probably see it if I turn like that, see so it's in there like this. What this will do is you, is you, you can tighten the bolts in sequence and actually angle this a little bit. Doesn't need like, doesn't need very much, but uh, it's just enough that you can track the belts. There's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of area in there that allows it to tilt. So that's how much, that's how much adjustment that you have in order to track the belts. So this is this guy's up here. And what goes on on this guy is this this is the counter shaft. So this is nothing but uh, a pair of pulleys that are attached to each other. Now this is this has the bearings inside of it and I said I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this in some detail because this is a pretty interesting part. But this goes on on here and it rides the bearings right right on that shaft. So the big pulley the pulley goes, the belt goes from here to this, which is up here, and then this is the main drive, goes over to the main, so main uh, pulley on the, on, the, on the shaft, so on the spindle. And of course, this also will drive the main spindle. So you'll see all that assembled later on, and make it a little bit more sense than it is right now talking about it, but these are the major components of the, of the uh, SAT motor drive, and uh, we'll, we'll put this up.